So with the release of Tesla's Optimus Generation 2, I thought I'd make this video to show you how crazy this really is and why Tesla's Optimus 2 is truly the future of AI and a couple of things in the field of robotics that you ought to see if you're a fan of Tesla, especially in the section that is robotics. So we're going to take a look at this trailer, then I'm going to break it down, and then I'm going to show you some things you really didn't know. Okay, so with the Tesla Optimus trailer, one of the first things that many people didn't notice was the fact that although last time we saw Tesla Optimus doing quote unquote well in a video, it did actually receive a lot of flack. And that was for one thing, and the fact that the Tesla Optimus was actually being held up by a cable to a wall. And now, what we've seen with the Tesla Optimus Generation 2 is that this robot is completely, I would say, autonomous in the fact that it is walking, you know, without any, you know, guided, you know, string. Many times when we do see robots in development, we do see them being held up because, as you know, like in the back right here, you can see that this is usually what you see when robots are in development. And if you check the last video where Tesla Optimus Generation 1 was, we actually saw that the Tesla was actually being just previously held up or before being released and that essentially just means that they haven't really fixed all the balance controls and when they know that they don't want their robot to essentially just be constantly taking beatings because of course robots are really sensitive and of course one thing that you must know about humanoid robots is that they're really really expensive so some of the robots that we are going to be looking at in this video are not the price of like a computer or a phone they are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and that is one of the key reasons why they do want to, of course, not break these things. But if they can show us that these robots are walking without any kind of, you know, support, then that means that the development is definitely further along than we did think. Now, what was also very interesting was, of course, like I said, improved balance and full body control, which, of course, we did talk about. And this squatting here was absolutely amazing, was the fact that we got these hands here. Now, there are two things that many people did miss about this, the faster hands. And I want to talk about that because it's really important. So one of the first things that people did miss was the fact that this isn't sped up. A lot of the times what we'll have, especially in robot demos, and I've seen this a lot because I've looked at a lot of research papers, is that these dem demos that we do have are incredibly slow. Like, you know, if you look at Google's uh, Palm e-robot, where they essentially put, you know, the Palm language model into a robot, and then they did certain things where they made that robot essentially use its large language model to do certain things. I would say that it looks really, really slow. But this one, okay, and I'm talking about the previous one that looks really, really slow, shows us that in real time, that is super, super fast. I don't think I've seen any robot that is that quick just yet. And I'm going to show you some of the other robots that we do have. Now, one thing that I do hope that this isn't, okay, is that this is VR Teleop mode. And I'm going to show you some clips of VR Teleop because most people don't know what that is. And basically, VR Teleop is essentially where you can move robots really, really fast. And basically, you know, a VR headset, like a VR Meta Quest headset, essentially you have that. And with that VR Meta Quest headset, essentially you can control the robot. And that is something really, really commonly done in robotics in order to control it because it's an easier way to control the robot in terms of, you know, actually getting the correct dexterity, the correct movement that you do want. So I do hope Tesla come out and say that that isn't VR Teleop. And if it isn't, which it probably isn't, that means that that is really, really insane because that just shows us that these guys are really really advanced in terms of how quickly they're able they're able to move the robot and the t the kind of dexterity because like i said if you watch any other robot demos you're going to see that it's sped up two times or at least three times which means that if it's not sped up that means it's definitely going to have a really really nice amount in terms of how it's going to be used because one of the things that people have talked about was the fact that a lot of these robots do walk really really slowly so if we just have like a 20 percent improvement where robots walk around as much as us or as fast as us that is going to be something that we can actually use and something that is going to be really really useful because slow walking robots that are less inefficient than us isn't going to be something that we can use just yet but if we do manage to get to that stage where these things move really really quickly then that is going to be very very effective now another thing that we do have here was the delicate object manipulation and this is a key thing now i do think that people need to understand here that although other robots have done this and i'm going to show you some clips of other robots do doing this um because there are a lot of robots that i want to show you guys for example this sanctuary ai robot that you can see right here that is picking some stuff up the thing about this though is that you can see that this was actually an egg okay and of course with this one okay with this robot right here no offense to the sanctuary ai team but i do believe that tesla's robot is pretty good because handling and placing an egg in the correct spot is very very hard okay and 
And this essentially, if you're wondering what I'm comparing this to, this is Sanctuary AI's robot. It's essentially a humanoid robot that another company is also developing. But of course, when we're looking at Tesla, being able to handle an egg with this kind of, you know, I guess you could say hair and gentleness is definitely something that shouldn't be underappreciated. And also what people didn't realize was that it was placed in exactly the right slot. So this shows us that what we have here from Tesla is really, really, really effective. Now, what's cool is going to be the next stage of robotics because why this is crazy is because not that, you know, this is like the first time we've ever seen anything like this. It's not. The craziness about this is the fact that this is being developed so, so rapidly. You know, it was only a couple of months ago that we saw the Tesla generation one. And of course, now we're seeing the Tesla generation two. Now, what's crazy, okay, is that other companies are in on this too, okay? What's crazy is that literally, I think it was yesterday or a couple of days ago, there was a company that basically released their one and it looks so eerily similar to what Tesla has released. I don't think, of course, they have maybe the same engineering, research and design, AI department and stuff, you know, like Tesla's an insane company. They have insane minds there. They have, you know, definitely a huge engine structure, but this Kepler company released this robot that is very, very eerily similar to the Tesla Optimus. And of course, it's sparked a little bit of debate online about how crazy humanoid robots are going to be in the future. Because when we do have multiple different companies all racing and rushing to develop their own version of a humanoid robot, we can see that this is going to be something interesting. Now, of course, you can see that the walking is, of course, not as good. But at the same time, it does show us how crazy and how effective some of these robots can be. But what I also want to show you guys is some of the other robots that are being developed because Tesla Optimus, you know, when I look at that video, when I look at this first video, I actually look at this video within reference to the other robot. So I know how good this demo is and how effective this actually does look. And one thing I do want to say, and although it doesn't really matter, but I do think that the futuristic design of the Tesla robot actually does look like the best I've ever seen. So I do want to say hats off to the design team, because if you can actually make the design look really, really sleek and modern, that is definitely going to be something that is a plus. And of course, uh, you know, if it's more aesthetic, it's definitely going to be more effective. Now, of course, we are going to be, you know, not going to be able to talk about robot video without mentioning Boston Dynamics. But the key here is that I do believe that this Tesla bot Optimus is a completely different robot to the Boston Dynamics Atlas. Now, Atlas, of course, has been developed for quite some time. And this is, you know, one of the most, in fact, the most advanced, you know, robot in the world. And I would say that this isn't as humanoid as others. The thing that you have to understand about Atlas is that Atlas doesn't have, you know, like hands and fingers. And I'm pretty sure that the way that it looks at the world is definitely going to be different. The Tesla bot is different in terms of what it's going to be there for its use. So Atlas, I think while it is still good, one of the things that we aren't sure of is that when it is going to go into you know, full scale production in terms of being used into factories, a lot of the times what you do have, although this does look really cool and although this does look really good, a lot of the times what you don't realize is that these are demos. And if you look on Boston Dynamics actual page, you'll see that there are many times where they have to run this simulation again and again and again to get this to do effectively because the robot does fail. So this isn't something that is, of course, you know, 100% completed. Whilst it is good there are sections where you can see that this robot does uh do do a lot of mistakes so there is still definitely a lot of work to be done because of course it is hardware and not software now one thing i do want to show you is another company called unitary how far they've come in terms of getting their humanoid robot they're able to like literally kick the robot and it's able to like stand up which is definitely pretty far and although this one like i said it doesn't have hands it doesn't have you know like the entire figure i do think that this robot is you know, something that's quite interesting because this one is much cheaper. And I think that these are the kind of robots that we might see in certain towns and certain areas because of the cost and flexibility to be able to have these robots uh, doing certain things. So I don't know what, it, what they're going to be doing, whether they're going to be, you know, patrolling or whatever. It's definitely going to be a truly fascinating future. Now, one of the things that you definitely do want to see is you do want to see this. So this is essentially going to be the future of LLMs. And if you don't believe me, we did a recent video where we talked about Google's Gemini and how they're going to be using Google's Gemini Pro in essentially large language model robots. And this video basically talks about how they use large language models, embed them into robots, and we get a different kind of future slash interaction with these robots. So I'm gonna show you guys this quick video so that you guys can see exactly how these large language models, which are of course taking over the internet right now, embodied into agents, well, physical agents, will interact with the world. With all the excitement surrounding large language models, taking my command and interpreting it based on the context of its large language model, which includes pop culture references such as Darth Vader. As you can see here, Digit has identified that Darth Vader's lightsaber is red and that a red box exists in its environment. 
So yeah, you can see that this is why this is so cool is because the, ne the next stage in terms of large language models and robots slash robotics is that these robots are going to have their own thoughts that are going to be able to help them to decide exactly what to do. And having this robot, you know, thinking and thinking, okay, I need to figure out what, you know, command I should use. You know, it uses an LLM to think, okay, dark sabers, light sabers, red. And then of course, I'm going to pick up the red box and then I'm going to go ahead here and use my internal engine and figure out which one is the tallest. And then of course, place it there. This is definitely the future. And essentially in this wired article, this is Google's DeepMind Demis Asabis says that Gemini is a new breed of AI. And if you don't know, this is, you know, Google's DeepMind, the same company that did AlphaFold, AlphaCode, and of course, AlphaGo. And of course, the recently Gemini Pro and Gemini Ultra, they essentially talked about how it says to become truly multimodal, you'd want to include touch and tactile feedback. There's a lot of promise with applying these sort of foundation type models to robotics, and we're exploring that. And of course, it talks about how Google has already taken baby steps in this direction. In May 2022, the company announced an AI model called Gato, capable of learning to do a wide range of tasks, including playing Atari games, captioning images, and using a robotic arm to stack blocks. And then of course they showcased a project called RT2 that involved using large language models to help robots understand and perform actions. So that's why things like this, and of course Tesla's, you know, bot is going to be super, super interesting in terms of what we're able to see, because I do believe that this kind of thing is only the beginning. And I mean, now it's starting to get the real attention and the real, you know, investment from a lot of people because people realize just how much this stuff can truly change the world. Hopefully there's gonna be more several breakthroughs over the future, make this stuff a reality.